Good morning, folks. We're starting by examining the coronagraph images from those solar eruptions we noted yesterday. While they will miss Earth, the density in these bursts inspires a bit of awe. Yanking ourselves out of the past into the incoming southern quadrant of the sun, it's got the sunspots. Jumping over to spaceweathernews.com, we find small sea flares but a halt to the two-day uptick in flaring. The incoming sunspots have been in decay, stagnation, knelt down in the front row, or just plain refusing to flare towards Earth. I'll give this guy a gamma-class magnetism, but the Earth-facing solar quiet appears to have taken round one. The solar wind remains elevated, but it is stable or weakening, if anything. The geomagnetic storms are finally over until the next impact and the cause of that solar wind stream was the dark northern coronal hole. But it is the next one coming in where we're focused for earthquakes for many reasons. First, the energy disruption has been in the magnetosphere or atmosphere rather than the ground, and the coronal holes themselves have been weak. This has been true almost all October, which is why four-pointers in Italy and Africa have been the type of thing we get to report this month rather than bigger ones. So when is that going to change? perhaps soon. The geomagnetic activity is waning like we just saw, and here we see that the incoming opening is red negative as opposed to just another positive green that makes it a bigger change. It is on the equator coming up from the south and that matters even more because the red power we've noticed in the northern areas from days ago has shifted south, meaning that the IMF ready to sweep past earth are gaining strength. What's my reservation in saying that there will definitely be an uptick? Well, the tropical storms are still kicking and that's not going to help two typhoons in the West Pacific, and a cyclone candidate dancing through the islands. Nora, south of Hawaii, chugging along and south of Mexico, we should get a name to this thing by tonight. Top story today is out of the ESO. We're looking at the Colsac Nebula, a new image, a bit of history, and some great videos linked for you below. They use the 2.2 meter scope at La Silla. Today, the featured content is a bit of catch-up. If you haven't read our recently published papers on the sun and earthquakes, they can be found at ncgt.org in the September 2015 issue. Look for the two papers by Davidson. I don't need to remind most of you that observing the frontier is just two days away. Tickets available at suspiciousobservers.org and at the door. Nobody fret over parking. There's lots of lots all over. If anything, double check that wake up call. Check in begins at 7.30 a.m. and you know at 8.30 will begin. Videos from the conference will be available in the coming weeks. The featured members content today is for those confused by our sugar comments yesterday. You'll want Deeper Look episode 69, Sugar and Cancer, and the August 1, 2015 episode of Fly on the Wall from just five days before that deeper look. We've got pressure and radar in our top viewer locations, a pressure and moisture look at the southwestern quarter of the globe, wind dictating absurd temperature waves in the north, and shots of our star to close. It's 6.25 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.